YouTube, what's going on? So, guys, today I'm again working on the MR2 because it's going to be a skinny minute so I get the super back. So right now, I'm removing everything. What I mean by that is I'm removing a ton of stuff on this car. So right now, I'm, I should say removing or relocating. Uh, right now, I just went ahead and relocated that from the firewall, or I guess you'd call it the trunk wall, to the motor itself. Uh, I went ahead and eliminated some lines over here on the motor. Um, if you can see here where there's two little rubber caps are on the intake. One ran here to the stock catch can. The other ran down here where you can see the little red filter. Um, the point for that was where the little red filter is for the IACV, also known as an idle air control valve. Now they usually run to the intake. Makes sense. For me, there's some like, metal brackets that go with it and some lines. It looks ugly. I like simplicity. I like if I ever have to remove the motor, that's one last thing I have to remember to put back on or dick with. It'll all come down as one piece. And when I take the motor out and I go, yep, put it right back in. Simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. So the other thing is, if you can see here in the black catch can, there's no filter on it right now. I'm waiting for a filter to come in. Uh, the one I ordered was wrong. I ordered a one inch ID um, and I need a three quarter ID. That one inch is just too big and it just sat loose on it kind of like your girlfriend was. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. So next up I want to do is I'm waiting on a poll right now. I have it on Instagram, so you guys might already be seeing it. But I'm going to remove the cruise control, it looks like, most likely. If anything, I can always throw it back in. Um, I'm not sure how hard this is going to be. But I'm going to show you guys step by step how I remove it. And there's some electronics to it. I might lean on Ty over at TCS. Um, ask him a few questions here. Or ask him one of, some of my MR2 friends how they removed it. Just because it doesn't look good. And it's, I don't know, it's bugging the shit out of me. Because it looks hideous. And I like simplicity. Merc. So let's go ahead and start removing it here. And I'm going to kind of talk you guys through it and how I go about it. Well, first off here, guys, is I'm going to remove these two nuts here and then the rest of them. I'm going to take the strut tower bar off just so I can get to this and over here to the actual throttle box to make this a little bit easier on myself. Um, I should be able to put this back on at any time to make it pretty easy for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this off um, and then show you. So go ahead and stick this on there. And I don't like using anything that's not power actuated anymore just because, well, I'm lazy. One other thing I'm noticing here, guys, is random like ground. So like this ground obviously goes, I believe this is a fuel line here, makes sense. Uh, but the way it's going up here, I'll probably move this ground from here down below somewhere just so you don't see it sitting up top like this. Again, simplicity factor and looks a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way too when I get this box. Um, now, first up, here's the line going to it, going to the actual um, throttle body box. I believe I have to take this one screw out and this takes this cap off. Once that caps off, I believe I'll be able to push this forward and pull it out. And then for this, again, I'm not really sure how this comes out. Uh, I see two bolts right off the bat, but besides that, I'm not really all too sure. So I'm gonna be kind of winging this guys and showing you on the fly here. So first up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this guy right here. Let's see if that comes out, yep. I think it's coming out. There we go. Whoa, hey, Ricky Bobby, calm down. This is the, God damn, that's in there. To hold on a plastic cap? That thing's in there, boys. Well, they're supposed to be magnetic, but apparently this lost its magnetic whatever properties. So let's see if this pops off. In there it does. Oh yeah, this should be pretty easy, boys. Before I remove this cable, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, uh, these two bolts right on top here, I'm not sure if the GoPro's picking these up, but there's two, um, well, screw style, screw style bolts that need to come out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take that. The only reason you need to take this off, the, there's a three 10 millimeters you need to to pull this out. There's two here on the side that you can easily get to. This cover though blocks one of the uh, 10 millimeters you need to get access to. So once I take this top off, it'll then give me access to it like so. And there's one right down here, which I'll move the camera then to show you guys. I went ahead and disconnected it from the mechanism in here. There's actually a little, see if I can pull this up here. Almost looks like a little anvil thing. What you have to do, it's hard to explain that it's too tight to get down there and I'll show you. Um, there's actually a little anvil which slips down in. You need to pull back this actual lever here. Once you swing it back so far, it loosens up the actual cord here because there's no tension on this. Loosens the cord up. You literally take a pick and pull up on the cord, on this cord in here. So you take a pick and pull up on this actual metal cord here and it lifts it out. Once you slide it out, you're done. So all you gotta do next is, there is another Phillips head screw right here, which will loosen this up. And then we can take these three bolts off and we take the cruise control out and we're done. I mean, that's it. That's literally how simple this is. Maybe for me, it seems really simple just cause I like screwing with everything, but yeah. So let's go ahead and grab that real quick. I go here, see if I can get my Phillips in here. Oh boy. 
There we go. She popped. Ah, it's actually full. I didn't know if it slipped in or not, so I gotta try and get on here. Here's again, I talked to you guys about before, that Hux Racing, what it comes in such, 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 such handy at this kind of points. There it is, now it's being magnetic. Now this should slip up and out, yep. So here's guys, what I was talking about, here's guys. Here you go guys, this is what I was talking about. This is the little anvil piece I was talking about. What you do is this slips down in, and when it has tension, it's pulling against this line. Once you pull against the mechanism, it loses tension, and this will slip up out. You literally just pull up on the cord, and this pops out. This is where that was tightened up at. So once you do all that, you're good to go. Three bolts now, 10 millimeter, remember. Three 10 millimeter, hold this in, and then your cruise control's out, and then you unplug it. Should be pretty simple. Again, I'm gonna use an impact for this just because it makes my life easier. Heard something drop. And then the last one's right here. I think so. From what I can see, there's three that hold it on, guys. Now this should, again, Keyword should. Let's go ahead and pull this 10 millimeter out where this falls down to, unless I drop it here. Nope, got it. Got that. So now we should be able to pull up on this. Now, here's the one last clip. If you can see here, guys, I gotta push down. You know how old plastic clips are, so see how well this wants to come out. Yeah, she doesn't. Give me a second here. All right, guys, so that took me a little bit of effort here, but these were just clipped in. Pull down on that hard enough and yank, and then, uh. Cruise control is completely out now. Look at that, completely out. A little dirty, but still in good working order, so don't wanna throw this away, I'm gonna hold on to this just in case I wanna put it back in. But now we have all this wiring and stuff, and I see a horn down here, which I don't know why there's a horn in the back of the car. That doesn't make much sense, so I might remove that too. So this might be a lot bigger project than I thought it was going to be. If you look down here, it's hard to see, but there's actually a horn back here. Why there's a horn in the trunk or in the engine bay of this car. I keep calling it the trunk. I'm still not used to these kind of cars yet. I have no idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this too. I feel like it's overkill. And if anything, I'll just put hello horns up front because you can't see them anyways. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this. And once I remove that, because this is for the cruise control, I can now get rid of all this wiring. Not get rid of it, I'll tuck it up and out of the way, but it'll clean all this up, make this whole area look a lot cleaner. So yeah, this will just look better. And then I gotta figure out what this is for now. So this goes to something. I don't know, where's this go to? Well, that feeds into that. Now I need to figure out what that is. Dang nabbit, Ricky Bobby. Now to get to this is gonna be a little tight, so I might have to change, guys. I'll be a little dark for you too because I can't hold the light. Um, I wish I had better overhead lighting. Unfortunately, I do not have better lighting, so let's see if I can get this thing. It's tightening up on me. Dang it. All right, there's one bolt. I think that's the only bolt. I think that's the only bolt. We're about to find out. Definitely not the only bolt. Something else is holding in here. Now we gotta figure out what it is. Okay, below that bolt there is one more which I did not see earlier. So hopefully I can reach it. Um, I'm hoping this will go in there. You bitch. This might be a little bit harder. Yeah, this might take a skinny minute, fellas. All right, guys, so went ahead and removed everything down here. So all that stuff has been removed now. We're all good to go. Now I have this random, I guess, what do you want to call it here? I guess this random, uh, oh, ground. Now one other thing, though, besides the ground there, one thing I found out is I can run that line right there, this one right here. I can run that directly to the throttle and get rid of that box altogether back here. So that box there, I can get rid of too. Um, the only thing is if I get rid of that, that's one more thing I have to reinstall if I wanna put cruise control back in. So I'm not sure if I wanna remove it yet. Yes, it will look cleaner, but just in case I do wanna put cruise in, I'm gonna leave it like it is for right now. Um, some of the stuff I did notice, so let's go ahead and turn this light back on. This right here, I was trying to figure out what this vacuum line's for. That's for the brake booster. I'm thinking about going to manual brakes on this car just because that long of a brake booster, I'm not sure how well that even works. It might work really well, I don't know. 
Um, the brakes do work pretty efficiently. So hey, maybe I should just leave it, but I'm gonna ask a couple people to see if they've gone to manual brakes yet or not. If they have, then I'm gonna just cap that off, get rid of this line altogether, go to manual brakes up front. Once again, one less thing to mess with and keep, you know, usability. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is there is some wiring down here, but that is for the ABS, and I do not want to remove ABS on this car just for the fact that it is so light. Uh, God forbid it does get a little slippery. I'd rather just be able to smash the brakes. I don't have to pump them, and it does all the work for me. Yeah, it's just I would rather not mess with it. So a couple other things I'm going to tidy up here. I'll set this back down, and we'll continue. All right, so I need to reach in here and figure out. I need to reach in here and see if I can get this bad boy. I think it's a 10 mil, I think. I might be wrong, I think it's a 12 mil, never mind, I lied. So apparently I just lied. It might be a, maybe it's a 12? I don't know. There we go, yep, 12 millimeter. All right guys, so I went ahead and removed over there the ground line. It was literally doing nothing. I'm not sure what the whole point was because it was literally going from the top of the shock tower down to the lower part of the shock tower. That to me makes zero sense whatsoever because they're not even changing the grounding point. So I just removed it all together. I don't understand and maybe there's something done when it was swapped or whatever, but it literally did absolutely nothing. There was no benefit. I looked all around, there's zero benefit of it. Um, so I just moved it. It already is grounded technically. If you see there, uh, that vacuum line, which again, I'm not sure why a vacuum line needs to be grounded, but the vacuum line itself is bolted to the shock tower. So it's already grounded out. So why there's another ground line added to it, I have no idea, but I guess that really doesn't matter. So I cleaned it up somewhat here. Uh, the next thing I might do is delete the brake booster line altogether. So if I go down over here, this line right here, guys, is for the brake booster itself. So I might actually just seal this off, remove this entire line altogether, and just get rid of it. Um, there's some wiring down here. I need to figure out how to tuck it away. Unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, it does have ABS, so that's what that sensor's for down there. So I can only remove so much of it before it gets to the point that you're taking away from why or the reason I bought this car. Unlike the Supra, I don't see any reason to remove the ABS as ABS in a Supra takes up all this room and it looks ugly. In this car, all the ABS is up front, so it's not in the engine bay, it's not cluttering anything, it's not doing anything wrong, so why remove it? Um, so I'm gonna try and keep it in this car, I'm just gonna have to remove the wiring in the way it's sitting right now, and then move it somewhere else to make it a little bit cleaner. But besides that, looks good to go. Um, there's maybe a few other things I might need to do to the car, but nothing severe at the moment. Here guys, I wanted to go ahead and show you. Um, here's the filter I was going to use on the catch can. Uh, if you can see right here, it's actually a one inch clamp. It is not a three quarter inch clamp. Apparently it is three quarter. I measured it. I thought a one inch is what it would really need when you gotta slip it over and clamp it down. I wasn't paying attention enough. Apparently a three quarter is what it actually needs. The problem is with three quarter, it's so random. A lot of things don't use that. So I have to really look around to see what uses it. I wish it would use this too, because if you can see here, it's actually black and not, most of them are chrome, kind of like the ones I have on the IACV or the idle air control valve is the ones with the chrome caps on it. It looks really cheesy, very 2000, early 2000-ish, very APC. You young kids will know what APC veneers, American products company. Uh, back in my day, God, fuck, I feel old saying that. Back in my day, in the early 2000s, American Products Company was in every AutoZone, Advanced Auto, Napa. They sold all the underglow, all the racing seats, all the intakes. Everyone had APC. I think they're defunct now. They're out of business. But everyone had it, and they're the ones that started all that. So what I have here in my ISCV is kind of actually, that actually is an APC filter. Because um, I've had that for probably 10 years, and I just never had to use it. Finally found an application I could use it on. So it's kind of funny for that. But... Anyways, got the car cleaned up for the most part here today, guys. Uh, I think there's a few other things I can do, but I think I'll be done with that. So that's going to be it for today. So guys, thank you very much for chiming in. I hope this wasn't too boring, but I wanted to show you what it's like to clean up some of this stuff, what I go through, uh, just little odds and ends. Um, maybe my channel is not always all that exciting, but hey, you know, you guys get a little tidbit of what my life's like and what I do when I'm messing with the car. So thank you very much. Do me a favor, go down below, check out the Instagram and Facebook. If you'd like to, go buy some merchandise. I have a few hats and shirts left. Thank you very much, and I'll talk to you later.